I'm wrestling, you're not weak for me. Celebrate what I am. Celebrate what I have been. Celebrate what I represent. And celebrate the many ways I have impacted your life. I will survive this test as I have survived others. I am forever etched into the very fiber of all mankind. The world needs me. Time is on my side. History guarantees me. I am wrestling. Do not wait for me. Welcome to episode number 43 of the T-Row and Funky Show, brought to you as always by our amazing sponsor, Defend Soap, Defend What You Have Built. And just want to remind you guys, you can follow us on iTunes. So click there, subscribe. That way you get the show every single week. You don't have to go find anywhere. You can just get it right on your phone. Listen to it as you're traveling. And I am joined as always by my fearless co-host, Mr. Tommy Rollins. What's up? What's up, my man, Ben? How are we doing here? Uh, I'm, I'm having a pretty good week. Um, you know, just staying busy with the Wrestling Academy stuff. We're getting, we are getting closer to the season. So, you know, we're setting up our... We do a little preseason tournament. We have our preseason camps, coaches clinics. So we're getting closer to that stuff. I'm excited. And then actually, for the first time, I'm going to Super 32 next week. I, I think five or six of the guys up here from Wisconsin uh, from my club are going. So I'm excited for that because I've never been. I heard it's a really good tournament. I am just I went worried. There, I went there three times as a college recruiter, Ben. It's huh. a very, very well-run event. It's a great, great place to, to find out who... The next big things are usually the best seniors, like the blue chip seniors. For whatever reason, they don't attend that event very well. Yeah, but the sophomores and juniors are there in droves, so it's a good event to be at. Well, I would say the seniors are probably busy with their recruiting trips. Wouldn't you think so? Yeah, that's actually a good point. That's probably why. I'm probably doing that. Um, you know, but I was watching this morning that freaking hurricanes headed right for North Carolina. I, you know, it's going to be a little too early for me to be there, and it's, hopefully it curves off a little bit, but. I ain't messing with no hurricanes. I don't know how those people in Florida do it. They're going to get drilled. Spoke, spoke, spoken like a true, you know, Midwesterner. Ben Greensboro is a few hundred miles off off the coast, so you should be fine, man. You, you can uh, relax. You'll you'll make it. All right. Well, I I am flying into Raleigh, which it was a very cheap flight because I'm sure everyone else is trying to fly into Greensboro. It's only a hundred miles from the coast, Tommy. That is not that far. It really isn't. You'll and, be fine. A hundred uh, miles from a bad storm. Come on, give me a break. I'll tell you one thing. One thing about Wisconsin: we do get the snow, and we do get the cold. We do not have natural disasters up here. There's no wildfires. There's no earthquakes. There's very, very, very rarely any flooding, no tornadoes, no hurricanes. You get the picture. There's not much to worry about up here. I, I really don't know how the hurricane people do it. Another thing, another thing about the uh, hurricane is you want to, you know, I'm in the produce business. You want to, you want to buy as many vegetables as you can right now because all the vegetables grown in the south, southeast this time of year, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash, you know, uh, commodities like that. After this hurricane, they could be triple the price what they are now. Cause the crop Interesting. Is about is, is, is the crop might get destroyed. We don't know yet. That that's an interesting thought. I'm actually probably going to take you up on that and go buy some vegetables. But um, nevertheless, Stock up, I, man. I I don't think our listeners tuned in to hear about the price of vegetables. They want to hear about some wrestling. Yeah. So. All right. Well, hey, you know we we <laughs> like to we like to bring all. We're in current events. We're at the news. We, yeah. we cover politics. We cover. You know, we cover natural disasters, the weather. You know, we've done it all. Yeah, we we've done it all. We got when, the, are we gonna, when are we going? When are we going to do religion one day? That oh, would be really interesting. That, that would be brutal. I don't I don't know when we could do that. I I know this presidential race, and we got about what a month left, maybe maybe slightly less than a month. It's uh, it's heating up. Hillary's been taking a nap for the last two weeks, so you know she's just keeping it on the down low. Don, and Donald just needs to not say some stupid things, and uh, you know we'll be all we'll all be good. This should be interesting. The next debate, I'm really interested to see. Oh yeah, that's hey, coming Donald up is, soon, right? That's uh, yeah, and you know, Donald Donald is going to be better in every debate debate because he doesn't have as much experience as Hillary. This is a new platform for him, I think, and uh, I think Hillary is going to be the same, you know, same person in every debate. So I'm interested to see how that goes. Me, me as well. All right, so let's go wrestling. So I are and, we going to talk about wrestling? Yeah, political wrestling politics first, since we we went off one politics. Okay. We're going on to the next politics. Um, okay. 
The UWW, I said they were going to put their head in the sand like an ostrich, and that, in fact, is what they've done. They did not even offer a public statement to uh, to refute what Flow Wrestling had put out on them about the refereeing. And so, and I, I got I to gotta stop you there, man. Sure. I got to give you some credit. I got to give you some credit. I kind of insinuated that I think they would have, they would have, I thought they would address the article that came out. You said, I think they're going to do nothing. I didn't really believe you, and you were 100% correct. Well, I, I got to give you some credit. I appreciate that. So let me, let me ask you then the same question I asked you last week. At what point? Does USA Wrestling take action and say we're out of here? This is just getting ridiculous. We're we're done. We're done with this. Um, you know, or or another maybe in Iran or someone like that. At what point do they say that we can't deal with this shit anymore? Well, at what point do they address it publicly? And at what point do they say we're leaving the federation or two separate discussions? And I think I do think we're at the point now where maybe it would do the wrestling world a lot of good by these national federations to make public statements about some things that are going on. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I, I did ask some questions. I was poking around. I heard, oh, there's some stuff going on behind the scenes. But, man, that's oh, not that. Oh, I heard that's, that, too. Stuff, yeah. stuff that you just can't, we, we're not at liberty to repeat. But, I mean, there's well, I, work going on behind the scenes. Nobody's sitting at the golf course you know, drinking a scotch and not trying to address these internal issues. Sure. Well, I couldn't get any from you. Maybe you have more than me, but maybe people think I'm a big mouth. I couldn't get any information. They just said there's stuff going on, and I'm like, well, well, I hope something comes of this because there's been a lot of other things that nothing's came up. I mean, think about the Russian coach from Cadet, Russian coach from Cadet Worlds. Not, nothing's happened to him yet, right? The UWW still yeah, hasn't, hasn't addressed the – the McLaren report where 26 Russian athletes failed drug tests. They didn't address that one yet. So my my faith in them to uh, successfully address important issues is uh, you got to say it's at an all time low. And it wasn't and it wasn't very high before. <laughs> I know, I know, man, crazy. All right, so Tommy, if if you and I ever become multi 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 millionaires, we are going to start our own wrestling federation. Why are you saying if? Okay, I'm when, when, when? I'm sorry, when? Yeah, jeez, come on, Ben. You're right. Think bigger yeah. than that. Think bigger. When? So when? It's only a matter of when. It just hopefully it's just <laughs> in time before UWW ruins everything. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so speaking of it in time and uh, and when things will happen, let's let's talk about this. And and this was not on our talking points, but I think it came out yesterday. Jordan Burroughs posted a blog that sounded a whole lot like he was going to retire thinking about retirement and then obviously the, a day later maybe less than a day later he posted a tweet that said just said i am not retiring but if you read the blog which i know you did tommy that definitely was not the impression that the blog gave you well the impression the blog gave me is that he could i mean i shouldn't say impression but my presumption after reading the article is actually different than what the wrestling community i guess perceived my presumption was he took a step back, realized what's important in life, is obviously heartbroken by his loss, and maybe he'll come back, maybe he won't. But if you were, if I were a betting man, I would have bet on him coming back after reading that. You would have. I would have, but to, 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 to say that somebody else thought he wouldn't have, I don't think that, I mean, he left it, he left it to be interpreted by the reader. He did do that, that much he did do. You well, know what I mean? I definitely yeah. think that. You know what I mean? Yeah, let, let me ask you this, Tommy. I could, I'm, I'm trying to remember your career exactly. I, I do believe you took a year off somewhere in there, correct? Or yeah, no, no I, reti- I, I definitely retired. Okay. It wasn't a year. It wasn't a year off like some of these guys do. I was done. Which, which and, year? Which um, year? Remind, remind me, because I know uh, you. Right yeah. after, yeah, right after the trials in '08. Okay. Um, I stayed on staff at Ohio State through March the, the, the next year, and then I went to the business world for approximately a year. And, you know, so so I was out of wrestling competitively for 20 months. And I would say for 12 months, for the first 12 of those 20, I was still retired. You know, and then the eight months leading up to the time when I came back, obviously it kept creeping in my mind. I was only 27, 28 years old, and I got back in. So yeah. um, uh, I, I wasn't taking a year off. I really thought I was retired. It wasn't a game. 
I was done. So and, let me ask you this because I, I have so I've never taken a period off like that. I and, and one of the things was fighting. Um, I know after I get done with the fight, usually I do take at least a few days off. Um, right. And that, that feeling is just so wonderful to not have to work out, to not think about your diet, to not do all of these things. But I never, ever, 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 to this day, so you can go back all the time, I've never given myself more than like a couple weeks off, to, and maybe not even that long, maybe we're talking like 10 days maximum, because I know right. that, that feeling feels too good, and if I get used to it, I ain't going back. So I have never given Correct. myself that time off. So that's what I'm thinking with with Burroughs. Like, man, and maybe you can you can speak on this. When you take some of that time off, it, it had to feel good to not have obligations to train, to not worry about your diet, to not worry about all of these other things that you 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 know worrying about on a daily basis when you're competing. It, it would just seem to me like it would feel so good that I'd be like, I'm never going back. And, and so, how, how was that process for you? Yeah, it was very difficult coming back. I mean, it was, one, it was great to physically and mentally, the stress was off. And physically, obviously, you have the opportunity to heal up and really feel healthy. Maybe not in shape, but you feel healthy. And even though you're getting less conditions, you just feel like a healthy person. And so, you know, that was good. But then coming back then, I mean, after 20 months off, I mean, honest to God, I don't think I was the same person until the Olympic year, which was like a year and a half into my really? comeback. It took you that long? Uh, yeah, and it took that long. Now, uh, now I will say this. I needed the mental break. Me, yeah. I'm not saying everybody does. I'm not saying everybody does, but I did. And, yeah, maybe physically, if I stayed in it, I would have been better off for the Olympic year, but I wouldn't have been better off mentally. I mean, for the Olympic year, 2012, I really was as mentally focused and prepared as I could have been. I have no excuses from that angle. You know what I mean? Um, so... The whole dynamic is different from each person, but you're making a good point. I think that, you know, Burroughs, he's been, sounds like he's been doing nothing for seven or eight weeks. And I don't think he's entered that time frame where it becomes counterproductive for him mentally or physically to be on a break. Sure. Um, I mean, is he, is he going to lose his skills? Def definitely not, right? But the one right. thing I, I will say, um, you know, in addition to the motivation, I know when, when I tried coming back in, in 2010, and I was fighting MMA and wrestling, so I, I was committed to neither one full time, right? I was kind of part time right. doing both. I did spend about three to four weeks right before the trials doing nothing but wrestling, um, but I had not had a full training. And I'll tell you, the first thing that went for me, and still to this day it's gone, you know, when I went back to the University of Missouri last weekend and wrestled, is my timing, my, my ability to get to people's oh, legs. No. It, now, it was there and we're scrambling. And it's not as much of a timing issue. It's more of a feel and that kind of stuff. I'm good. I can wrestle with those guys in the scramble. But as far as me, you know, get, setting them up and getting to their legs has become significantly more difficult. And you look at a match like, you know, when I wrestled um, uh, Quentin, Quentin Wright, he, he played right into my game plan. He tied up with me. He didn't make me hit very many shots or, or any from the outside, right? And then, right. And then you contrast that with when I wrestled um, Clayton Foster, who who would not really let me get any good ties or get into that, you know, and it, you can see my timing's just not there. It just isn't. Now for uh, Burroughs, uh, for me, that's not my whole game. I could do this, but for Burroughs, his wrestling style and his and the way he wrestles is predicated on his timing. So if his timing goes, doesn't everything go? Yeah, if, if it does, yes, if it does. But but I don't think he. You know, what is he, 28 or 29, Ben? Something Ooh, like that. I would say 29. I yeah, and, you know, who knows if he's doing nothing. Maybe he's jumping rope, you know, drilling once a week. You know, who knows? I mean, even on a break, if you've been training at that high of a level and you're on a – but you're coming in and you're drilling once a week or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And, and I mean, honestly, that's enough to build bridges from one week to the next where you never really lose – that familiarity with your timing and everything. But you're bringing up good points. I think it's worth talking about. But my opinion, if Jordan Burroughs were to do nothing from the end of the Olympics, which is August 20th-ish, through Christmas, if he did nothing but stay somewhat physically yeah. fit, and he got back on the match in January, I think that he would be fine by the time the U.S. Open came. He'd probably be mentally refreshed, physically healed, and I don't think he would miss a beat. If he chooses to stay out of sport past January, I think I think personally he would be stepping into a realm that is 
kind of a little bit murky, and you, you you know you start to wonder if you know you're you're losing an edge or or a timing or or a some type of you know that one percent type stuff that people talk about. Yeah, I think that that time frame you start entering into that time frame. If that makes sense. Yeah, because we, we you know, I, I just do want to remind people that, that Kyle Dake is going back down to that weight. And while Jordan has, has you know, double-legged and laced him a couple of times, there also have been some situations where there have been really close matches with him and Dake. So I don't know that he's that far above Dake where he can take time off. Now, m- maybe he is. Maybe he is. Because he is definitely one of the best guys I in think the world. I, I, actually, I actually think that no harm, no foul. If he starts training hard again in January, okay, I really so, believe so we're that. Say, you're saying four months. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think he's completely fine. Anything after that, yeah, then I'll then I'll start to kind of say what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this is what happened to Ronda Rousey, right? She got um, she got knocked out by Holly Holm, right? And people say, oh, she just needs some time off. She just needs some time off. And now, now we're almost a year later, and people are saying, "Well, shit, is she even going to come back?" You know, no one knows because I, I really just think, and that's why, I like, when I retire, I feel like it's it's for good. I'm just done. You know, I might do some yeah. things for fun in the future just to stay in shape, but when I'm done, I'm done because I can't imagine that feeling that I have after my fights where I can just not worry about anything and it's just so relaxing. Then to yeah. um, to you know, to take that for two or three or four months, right, and then actually right. have to get back into that grind because I mean, especially at Burroughs' weight, um, he's got a lot of young, hungry guys coming up. I mean, you got you got Dake, you got Deeringer, Andrew Howe's obviously still there. You're going to have this crop coming up behind him with Mark Hall, with Isaiah Martinez. I mean, hit, well, that's hit. that's what that's what that's what's so great about the sustained excellence that he's already maintained. Even if it, even if it did, even if he couldn't continue at that level, what you're saying, he stayed at the top of the pile on a world level for basically five years. Yeah, four, four, five, you know, years. five years. Five years. Yeah, five years. Because you know, so so even if he can't pick up where he left off, what he did, I wouldn't say it's unprecedented, but what he did is incredibly rare. In the history of American wrestling, well, yeah, incredibly and so, rare. And I, you know, I, I appreciated that more than you because I had him on, as number two on my all-time list, and you had him at number four or three. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, I might have. To, yeah, I, I, might I have think to I think it's going to be interesting. Spots, though, cause I, I thought his blog. I thought his blog was well written. I mean, what did you think? No, it, it was very well written. It was thoughtful. It it was insightful. Um, I, I thought think, it was genuine. I thought it was uh, genuine yeah. too. I think maybe uh, he on purpose left left the readers with a lot of questions to be answered. I think he could have. Um, I think he could have spelled yeah, he a lot of he, it he, a lot yeah, more he, clearly if he wanted I mean, to. Yeah, it's like it's like I know he tweeted a day later that he's not retiring, but it's not like I mean he definitely left a cliffhanger out there. I mean it's not. I mean it's not like everyone. Um, Misinterpreted or sensationalized his blog. He absolutely left the reader yeah, wondering. Absolutely, absolutely, you know. So it's like it's like it's not unreasonable for all the readers to wonder, you know, what he meant by that blog. But I thought it was well written. I thought I liked it a lot. But yeah, it's like, yeah, I guess he's suggesting that he's contemplating not wrestling anymore. And then to, your, to my point earlier, my contention was I think he'll still wrestle. But yeah, I mean, he left the readers with. A little bit of uncertainty. Do you think he? Do you think he coaches in Nebraska? Um, is that something he wants to do? Does he go back? Because him, and, he's from Jersey as well as from New York. Do they go back to the East Coast? Um, you know, do we know anything about? Because hey, he, he was a coach for Nebraska, and then he said, "Hey, that that's consuming too much of my time. I'm out. I'm not doing it. I need to focus on my wrestling." So took a step back from that. Um, so I don't know that he's in the coaching 100. percent Do Do we know what his next move is going to be, or we think? My, I, I don't know what his next move is going to be. My prediction is that he does take um, these holidays here and is more of a dad and a husband than he is a world class competitive athlete in his own mind. And um, and I think he enjoys these holidays. I mean, I would do that if I were him. And then I think in January he's going to refocus, gear up, and try to really just redeem himself from August's performance. And then I think from there he'll just go one year at a time because. You know, to the point you're making, I mean, speed is the first thing to go. 
in my opinion. It's the first speed. The first thing to go. Really, diving speed is. I say yeah. timing, but they, those aren't too far off. Those are very similar. Um. Yeah, I think they're similar. Yes, yeah, so I think speed is the first thing to go. So, you know, he's 28 now. He'll be 32 in four years. 28 and 32 is a lot different than 24 and 28. So, I think he should just take it one year at a time and and enjoy enjoy the ride. And uh, I'm excited for him to come back. I I obviously. I'm a big fan of his. I know you are too, and so it'll be interesting. But I don't think I don't think we're going to see him on the mat or heavy training through the holidays. Have, here they, have they announced there. when U.S. Open is? No, I don't think so. They have not yet. I'm, I'm going to go to U.S. Wrestling. No. We're, we're going to see if they've announced it yet. Um, because yeah, like I said, he's gonna, he's going to have some tough competitors. Do I do I think he's still the favorite? Of, of course, he's still the freaking favorite until until proved otherwise. Um, right. But he's he's got some good competition. And it will be interesting to see, you know, if he does take four months off, like you're saying, is that is that going to be great for him? Is it going to be a refresher? Or is it going to be like, uh, I just I don't feel like coming back? Is it going to be one of those? Um, all right. I'm, well, I'm it's hard, man. It's, 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 it's hard to, um, I'll say it from a guy who's, you know, played that game. Uh, it's hard to, to get into that Spartan lifestyle, that Spartan mentality. Yeah. That's absolutely what these what these guys are doing. It is a unique way of thinking. It's a unique way of living. Um, and you can't just jump back into that. I mean, to your point, Ben, I mean, everybody out there that's taking two weeks off, you know what it's like those first couple of days back. Just imagine taking yeah. four months off, and I did 20 months. I mean, it was, 20, a, that's crazy. it was it's a foundational shift in your thinking, you know, and it's like you got to go back to that Spartan mentality. It's not easy to do. Tommy, I, I'm very confused here. So I, I did pull up the USA Wrestling calendar, and it says, okay, so it says on uh, April 26, 27, 2029, 20, there's, obviously there's a bunch of tournaments like there always is in Vegas, but it says US Open. It also says US Senior World Team Trials the same weekend, but then if you scroll down to June 9, 10, that also says U.S. Senior Men's Freestyle World Team Trials. So it says, it says just huh. freestyle there. So I guess I'm confused as to exactly what that means. So does that mean the Greco World Team Trials will be in another time? or? I don't know. I don't know what that means. So okay. what was the, when's the open at? 26, 27, 29, April in, in Vegas. Okay, good deal. So interesting. Yeah, so if he comes back in, he comes back in January. Yeah, he'll be ready by off, April. What? Shakes the rust off in one tournament overseas, goes to maybe one other one, and then he's hit his stride by the time the Open comes. Yeah, for sure. And now that that uh, uh, what's the guy's name that beat him? I'm, I'm blanking the Russian guy. Gadeev. Gadeev. Thank you. Now it's you know it has been reported that he's going up, and so is um, Sedulayev. That they're both moving up. So I you know obviously Burroughs, is and he had one bad tournament. The Olympics was a bad tournament. He's right back in the mix I immediately. Oh, of um, course. I mean, of course. I mean, how could you? How could you not think that? You know what I mean? Yep, for sure. So, JB, uh, hopefully you come back. We want to see you compete for at least a few more years. But I understand how it feels, and if you want to retire, no one is going to fault you for it. And that's the, right. The that's been, right. I, you know, I would say that the third best career ever by an American wrestler. Tommy would say fourth, but you know, either way. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, well, and you know what? He's got Kyle Snyder coming up behind him. So if Kyle Snyder doesn't go fight MMA, he might get bumped one more uh, notch down the rung there. Right, yeah. right. It could happen. It could happen. One thing that Does Kyle Burrows... say you talked to Snyder in the last week. Is he going to fight or what? I don't know, man. I haven't talked to him lately. Okay. I should probably schedule a morning workout with him. That was you talk. probably should. You should. You should schedule a morning workout. Maybe maybe make him do some uh, running or something else so he's a little bit tired and then hop in on him like a, like a sm smart older guy would do. Yeah, or I maybe, think maybe I a little, little bit sharp more bait or something. A little bit more wisdom in my approach next time he asks mm -hmm. me to train, if he ever does. I I would agree with that big time. Um, <laughs> all right, let's move on to who's number one. Uh, I know I got to watch this live with the I, I missed one match unfortunately. Um, did you watch it live, Tommy, or you caught it at some point? All right, which one are you talking about, Ben? I lost. Who, I'm sorry. Who's number one? Oh event. yeah, yeah. I got to watch. Um, I didn't watch all of the matches. I watched uh, obviously Decatur and Carr because they're Ohio boys. I watched um, uh, Brewer and Ramos, and then I, I watched. Um, oh, there's one other one I watched. 
Was it? Uh, I don't know. They're, they're they were all pretty good. The only one I missed was Whitley Labriola. Um, Tommy, you know, you know, I don't have a, a strong. I have strong feelings against Tony Ramos. So anytime he gets his ass whipped, I'm I'm pretty happy. Now that be, <laughs> that being said. If you would have had put my money down, I there's no way I would have bet on that happening. Not in a million years. If you would have gave me um, really good odds on the score being 12 nothing, I would have never bet that. I would have felt like especially, you was wasting money. Especially, especially 12 nothing with, was it four or five takedowns? It was five takedowns. Right. It's like 12 nothing is one thing, especially in freestyle. Oh, if it's a lace or guy. something, sure. Yeah, but it's like, no, I took you down, stood up. Went back, put my foot back on the color, took you down again, stood up, put my foot back on the color, took you down. It's like, holy smoke. No one would have ever, ever guessed that. That uh, is seriously insane, right? So, I mean, right. I, you know, the, the one thing, you know, we know wrestling math doesn't always work, but the one thing I was thinking, Nishan Garrett beats, it, this is before the match, obviously, Garrett beats Brewer twice last season. Um, Nishan and, and Ramos have a highly controversial, but very close match. And... To, to everyone's point, everyone says, well, Brewer can attack the legs. Well, so can Nishan Garrett. Garrett, I would say, is more dynamic at attacking the legs than Cody Brewer is. They're both great leg attackers, but I would have said Garrett's better. And Ramos held him to a really, really close, tight match. So never in a million years did I think Brewer's going to come out and blow through him in this manner. So I guess I, I, the question I would ask you is, did it has the move to North Carolina affected him? Is he in this transition period where eventually he's going to end up better, but he's in you know in flux right now? Uh, is Brewer just that good? Like what are we what are we talking about here? Uh, I think you got to yes to all of that. You got to ask all those questions. I also think that Brewer's just flat out bigger than Ramos. And um, but Ramos Brewer wrestled sixty one kg at uh, at World Cup, and oh uh, he didn't do great, but he didn't do terrible either. Yeah, I just, I just would, I just don't think Ramos and Brewer are the same type of weight class. I mean, I just think that's part of it. The other part is to your point. I mean, um, Nishan, I think is a smidge better at leg attacks than Brewer, mm -hmm. but I think Brewer is, is more aggressive. He's more of like a he he puts the assault to people, and I think Ramos had a more difficult time with that. Whereas um, Nishan's match, especially the Olympic trials, because I was match side. You know, he was trying to be more tactical about his leg yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think I think if Deshaun just did rapid fire shots, he sure. probably would have had um, more success with Ramos. You know, maybe not similar to Brewers because they were down down a weight class, but you know, kind of. Yeah, I I think Ramos is in trouble a little bit. I mean, how can you not think that when you watch him get checked by a guy? So you think? I, so I guess you're, you're saying I I don't you don't think that there's any way that um, Cody Brewer could possibly make. 57 kilograms. He, he's a 61 I guy. I do not. And maybe in the off year, he's a, um, he's a, a 65 guy. Because he, he'd be tiny for I don't 65. See I don't, well, I just don't think Brewer could make it all the way down. If he can, wow, that's amazing. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, that you would, know, the would other thing is, I, I, I think Ramos, just like anybody that's been on the circuit for a while and they're at that age, I mean, listen, I've been there, you've been there, and you know, it's just like, what have you done for me lately? And that's what it's like at that level. It's like, you know, now there's a new crop of guys. And if you want to stay on top, you're going to have to figure some stuff out. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And so where does this put, I, I, I believe Ramos has made the commitment to wrestling in um, the, what's it called? The non-Olympic non World Team Trials. Is that what it's called? Right. He, he's made that commitment right. to wrestling in that event. Obviously, Brewer's going to be there. I've heard Garrett's bumping up. But some some of the guys who did the best at at sixty one kilos last year, right? I mean Humphrey, right? The the finals of that is Humphrey versus Dennis. I don't believe either one of those guys is competing at sixty one kg uh, for the for the non non Olympic World Trials weights. So it, does Brewer go to the top of the heap right away, or you know who's who's favored there now? I think I think Logan Steber might be going down. Ooh, you 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 think or you know? Because you're pretty close to that. Uh, honest to God, I should know, but I don't. Come the on, last time I, had, I, well, I I can find out real quick. But last time I had the conversation a couple months ago, I think Logan was dieting down. And the last couple of times I've seen him, he just looks a little bit leaner. His face is a little more chiseled. I think he's going down. I think he's going down. Um, I don't think that's a secret either. 
But I think he's going down. Um, but I don't know that for a fact. Okay. So so we're talking uh, that that Logan, is he the favorite then? Because Brewer has beaten Steber in a freestyle match. Yes. I mean, I would still favor Logan, not because I think Brewer is not good enough. It's just I think based on the past, you know, 15 months of international wrestling, you know, I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make Logan at the top, put Logan at the top of the pile for this trial. What, do you, so do you know what other, if if any, what other 65 kilo guys are going down? Well, I know Kennedy. Could Kennedy's go down. obviously He's wrestled gone. there before. Yeah, so I could see him going down, and, and I guess if that's the case, you could say he's the favorite because he's got uh, he's won the last few against Steeper. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I do believe so. I'm going back here to look up the Olympic team trials results and see all of the 65 kg guys and see which right. ones we could possibly think are going down. Uh, you know, that being said, Kennedy's getting older too. I mean, he's not he's not young. I want to say he's getting close to 30. So you know, he's kind of looking towards the end of his road. Also, listen, if you, if you're if you're wrestling and the first number and the, the first number of your age is a three. That means any any day now, any day now, you <laughs> any know, day now. Go, goofy stuff could happen to you. Sure. All <laughs> but, right. Wouldn't you agree? I, I would agree. I would definitely agree. So yeah. we got Metcalf. He ain't going down. Molinaro's not going down. Russell's not going down. Steber apparently is. Uh, BJ Futrell. I believe he's wrestled sixty one kg before. Correct. He has, but man, have you seen him lately? <laughs> I, I have not seen. No, I haven't seen him. Oh, dude, he checked out of his mind. But, yeah, he has for sure. And I want to say he was even 25 in college. So, oh, um, was he? I don't know. I can't recall. I could see, he's been down before, but the last time I saw him, I was like, holy cow. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Kel- Kellen Russell's been down there before. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah he's been yeah. down there, I think. Okay. Um, all right, so if you trail, we'll say that maybe. Rutherford, obviously not. James Green, obviously not. Jimmy Kennedy was a maybe. Um, Dean Heil, he'll be in college season. Chamberlain. Steber is a probably. Steber's a probably. Okay. Chamberlain's going up. Let's, let's, Humphrey's retired. Is that correct? I think he's taking a year off. I don't think he's officially retired. Man, but he's getting older now. I mean, he's got he's got to be thirty, right? Thirty for sure. I think he's thirty or thirty-one. Thirty. Okay. So I mean, so we're talking about the next time the Olympics comes around for him. He's thirty-four, thirty-five. He's he don't have a lot of time left. Right. Anyway, anyway, you slice it. Uh, Pico, Ness, and Oliver, none of them are going down. No way, Pico, not for sure. No, no way. No way. So how about how about 57s going up? Obviously, you talked about Ramos, Nashawn. Would do all of them just go up just to see what's going to happen? I mean, why, why wouldn't you? Why yeah, wouldn't, why wouldn't you? you? I mean, what else, what else is there going on this fall? Is you know Ra- what I mean? is, yeah, is Ramos eligible? What do you mean eligible? I'm sorry, Ramos. Um, oh, my God. Dan Dennis, is he eligible or can he not do it since he made the team at the other weight? Oh, I bet he could do it. You think so? Yeah, I bet he could do it. Damn. I bet well, he'd be allowed. Wow, I didn't realize the run that Tyler Graff went on. I mean, he lost to Dan Dennis, but he 10 0'd Nate Tomasello, he 10 0'd Nishan Garrett, and he 10 0'd Alan Waters. It's pretty freaking yeah. impressive. Holy crap. Pretty amazing, right? <laughs> it really is. Wow. Wow. So he he was a bigger uh, 57 kg guy, so you got to imagine he's going to go up and he's going to be in the mix um, there no doubt. as well. Okay. No doubt. All right, so let's let's hit up the rest of these uh, who's number one matches. But that, that I think that Ramos. Um, Ramos Brewer was the highlight of the night because it was such a stunning, stunning defeat, uh, stunning match. I mean, I got so many texts when that happened. Like, holy crap! Did you just see that? Yeah, no. It's, it was uh, like I said, that many takedowns against a guy like that at that level is pretty darn unique. Unique. You don't see it a well, lot. Twelve nothing's unique, but five takedowns is more unique. Does that make sense? No, it, yeah, hundred percent. Because you can take take down to a lace that can get racked yep. up some points yep. real quick. Um, right. All right. So we let off the we let off the night with Teasdale Decatur, who, like you said, who is an Ohio Decatur's an Ohio boy. Um, this was an awesome match, uh, and Willie said he put it put it there number one. You know, the first match of the night because he knew it would be exciting. And um, but I just can't understand for the life of me. One of the things that I, that, that drives me crazy, Tommy. And I know I have a thought. Is, is bad strategy 
So when Decatur hits that amazing uh, move in the first, puts him on his back, why is he still going upper body with Teasdale in the second period? Can you tell me that one? Well, I think the biggest reason is he's a 15-year-old kid. And, I mean, Ben, I don't know about you, but when I was 15, I didn't really have a match strategy. I really didn't. <laughs> uh, I, re- uh, I really didn't. I mean, I just wrestled. Sure. So I think that's the biggest reason. But, yeah, I mean, obviously poor strategy, poor tactics. I mean, across the board when you're watching it at that level, um, besides people like, you know, you got Spencer Lee, I think he he has a strategy when he's in tight matches. Um, like at the junior rolls when I was watching them. Mark Hall is pretty savvy with strategically yep. and tactically, but most of these guys just go. And I don't, I'm not even, I'm not even judging them for it. I mean, I think it's kind of a good thing because I think you learn the sport, uh, at the foundational level better if you just go. Because huh. tactics and strategy is actually the easy part. What you said. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right about that. Tactics and strategy are definitely the easy part. So yeah, I mean, he, he, it was kind of a sloppy strategic match, but, this Jordan Decatur kid, although I am proud that he's from Ohio, I got to be honest. Up until that match, all I knew was his name. I knew people told me he was good. I had no, no clue whatsoever that he was that talented um, or innate advantage, as you would put it. And um, I was actually blown away. I, I mean, I just heard that he was really good. And then after watching that match, I'm like, gosh, he's as blue chip as it gets, I and mean, he is like, like upper echelon type kid so i was very impressed and obviously teasdale is still i mean i don't i don't think less of teasdale because jordan decatur beat him i think just i just think more of decatur if that's sure sense. And, and i liked how decatur kept his composure because when he gets inside trip to his back and it, it ties the score up six to six i'm thinking like oh he's gonna crash and burn here you know how a lot of people when they have that Correct. big lead and then they give some points up they just they mentally they're out of it but he stayed in it no he doubt. got the escape uh, he did what it took to one, and I think it was uh, final score eight seven, correct? I yeah, it was eight uh, seven. He got he, he got gritty, got the takedown back, got the lead back. I think he fought off a couple inside trips at the very end too. And so it's just, you know, it, it is it is nice to see a kid build a lead. The guy comes back, the momentum's there, and he gets gritty. He gets gritty again to pull it out. It's 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 a good sign. I mean, that kid shot right to the top top of mind for me. He's probably been top of mind for a lot of other people, um, you know. But it's just for me personally, like, well, wow, I know who that guy is. I'll never forget in the next couple of years how good he is. You know what I mean? For sure. Okay, match number two is is uh, Verclearn versus Caden Gefeller out of Oklahoma. Um, Verclearn going to Iowa State. Gefeller's going to Oklahoma State. Uh, I gotta tell you, I I really thought, and this is coming from. From me, but I thought Gefeller was just too much funk and junk. I really did. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got to be honest. I didn't watch the match. Okay, um, I read about it. So, but I want to say he tried neck wrenching for clearing like five times and didn't really get close once. It was like, what? Stop! Please just stop with the neck wrench. I mean, Tommy, right. I, I haven't neck wrenched a good guy since two thousand and one. <laughs> it's, it's been a long time. It just it very very rarely works at any kind of high level. Right. So. The fact that he kept going back to that was like, ugh, what? What's he doing? Right. Um, right, right. Clearly looked good. He was dominant. Uh, I believe the final. Score. I, well, I've, I've seen. I've watched the kid wrestle on some other slow videos, and um, is that how you say his name, Verclaren? Verclaren. Yep. Um. Yeah, I think I think he's still got some. You know, he he's obviously a big time recruit, but. Um, you know, I think that, you know, there's some other guys that I watched that were more, like, eye-popping than him, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you want to hear a funny Jerry McLaren story? Yeah, let me, let me hear it. Okay, well, I, I got to go out to Young Guns this summer, and do I was doing a little one-day camp for them, and, man, the amount of talent they have in the room, well, talent doesn't exist, the amount of skilled athletes they have in their room um, <laughs> is, is amazing. I mean, it, just in that one day, Spencer Lee was in there, Gavin Teasdale, Cam Coy, uh, Jared Verclear, and I mean, it was just you, you name it. You know, they were there. Just big night, big, That's big time guys. But and on the break, I want I, I love working out with people. You know, just wrestling, getting you know, getting a feel, see what people are doing. So I, you know, I hey, let's let's work out. So I, I was just wrestling around. Obviously, I'm a lot bigger than these guys, so we couldn't like live wrestle or anything. We were messing around, but Verclear keeps trying to scramble with me. And uh, and I love you know, it. that that's my world. You know, you're just not gonna beat me there. So 
So I'm, I know. I'm catch him here, catch it's him like there. It's, it's like it's like he's in your house, but the lights are on for you and they're off for him. Yeah, yeah, that be it. That's a very good. <laughs> yeah, it's a good analogy. So anyway, so Tommy, we get done. I, we went like ten minutes. I, you know, I was messing around with different kids, and he goes, "Man, you're pretty good at scrambling. I usually beat everyone in those <laughs> positions." <laughs> uh, I, was, awesome. I didn't know what to say. I just started laughing. Young, young kids yeah, these days. Great. Strip, strip matter probably coached him up on your background when he left. Yeah, he did. It, it, was, it was pretty funny. Um, great. Okay. I actually just got a text from one of your guys, Brock Manning. I get it. Okay. Okay, so let's keep going. <laughs> Nick Lee, Sammy Sasso. I thought this is the, ma- the I match of the match. night. I watched that match. Eight to three. Um, Nick Lee, well, I guess Nick Lee, I'm going to say he probably looked the most college ready. Oh, he looks ridiculous. I was like, shit, Penn State's got another Noel Rather- Rutherford type. I mean, the pace he put on was just, he was just attack, attack, attack. And, and to his credit, Sasso did some pretty freaking awesome things. Um, you know, I, in my opinion, showed some flashes of brilliance in those scrambles. But Nick Lee was just so comfortable wrestling through those positions and so aggressive. It was it was hard to keep. Kind of, kind of, he kind of, he kind of reminded me, and he kind of looks like Noel, doesn't he? Does he does he really does? And so he's already living in state college. He for he for went for go, for went his final year of high school eligibility and moved to state college. Did you know that? So what does that mean? Does that mean he's still not enrolled though? Right? No, he's, I get apparently somehow he's finishing uh, his high school credits or whatever and he's wrestling at the Nittany Line Wrestling Club and plans on wrestling freestyle this year which I didn't even wow. I didn't know you could do that but obviously for him as a high school kid uh, as good as he is I can't imagine he's gonna get challenged that much at the high school level um, yeah but you know the right at the move. same time man I mean these yeah it's just it's like okay so you're missing your senior year of high school though with all your friends and it's pretty I guess to each their own but, I want to say he might have been homeschooled though for a while so Maybe okay, he doesn't have that it. same relationship. I, don't quote me on the homeschool thing. I, I feel like he was, but I'm not 100%. Got it. Um, so, no, Nick Ramo, Ro, Roman Bravo Young. I'll tell you, this is the match I was most looking forward to. They wrestled at uh, Akron. It, it was a really good match. And I want to say it was kind of disappointing. It, I wanted, the final score was maybe 4-2. Um, Ramo was not aggressive at all. Bravo Young was way more aggressive. And I was just overall kind of disappointed by this match. I thought it was going to be a lot better. Yeah, I know. I think um, I read about that match, didn't watch it, but I've watched plenty of Bravo Young matches. He's super, uber talented. And Ramo, isn't he the number one overall uh, sophomore? Ramo is, oof, I... I can't. Don't quote me on that one. I don't know. He's from I, New Jersey, right? He's from Jersey. He's, he actually won all yeah, four. Yeah, Fargo I, think, titles. I think I think he's I think he's the number one overall sophomore. You could okay. argue that Decatur is now. I can look this um, up. Okay, class of nineteen, big board. Willie just put this up, and we got night number one. Nick Ramos number one. Decatur's number two. Um, Colton Schultz is number three. So, yep, Nick Ramo is who, number who do you, one. Who, who, do you think, who do you think deserves one or two, Decatur or Ramo? I don't know their uh, accolades. Either, I mean, if, if, if we're from, talking from strictly from performances on, on the other day, if we're talking strictly yeah, from who's performances, on, who's number one? then Decatur yeah. is. I, I'd say without a doubt. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would put him number one for sure. Um, but Ramo, obviously, four-time Fargo champ. He's a beast. Um, okay, next match we got. I, I, no, no, I was looking through them. I missed two matches, not one. Uh, so next match we got Michael Beard and Jelani Embry. Uh, fairly dominant performance from Michael Beard. Uh, he's just strong, tough. He's still, still only a junior. Em, Embry's going, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Hello? Give me one second, Tommy. What the freak? Tommy, give me a sec. All right. Ah. Uh, did you, could you hear that, Tommy? No, what's going on? Oh. Wow, how can you not hear that? A freaking advertisement popped up and I was uh, for Flow, and I was having trouble getting it off. 
Um, are we still are we still recording? We are still recording. So we'll. we'll I we'll, love it. That's great for the show. <laughs> I wonder if the show can hear that advertisement on Flow. All right. So I didn't hear it. Beer. Okay, that that's bizarre. I thought you could hear that. Um, all right. Beard kicks Embry's butt. Uh, Brady Berge versus Shane. So I, I missed this match also. So I okay. missed two. So I missed this one. I missed Gabriel, but like um, Berge wins first time back. Uh, Cam Coy versus David Carr. Now this is one you saw. Um, I was really impressed with David Carr. Just uh, kind of yeah, the same he, as uh, who uh, Nick Lee. He just kept attacking. Just kept attacking and attacking and attacking. Yeah, he's just he's just coached. He's just coached well. He follows a process in the match that is that is definitely going to work well at the collegiate level. I mean, he just has he does he does smart things and smart things only. I was very impressed. I watched him wrestle Demas in the state finals. I think I watched some of his Ironman matches last year, but I haven't watched a whole lot of Carr. And, um, I mean, if I'm Ohio State, it's like I can't let that kid leave. And you know that Iowa State is probably has his, a, a good has, – has, has an inside move as well. His dad went there, Carr, right? He, yeah, yeah, he went there. And I think I think Nate, Nate Carr, his dad, is probably pretty friendly with KJ. So, um but I, I mean, I, you can't let that kid leave the state. I mean, he's he's got it. Yeah, to your point, I would say my favorite wrestler, as much as I hate to say it, at, at WNL was Nick Lee, then Carr, and then Decatur. Oh, favorite? Okay, let me see. Let me look through. Actually, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna go ahead and agree with. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and agree with uh, exactly what you said. Um, yeah. So, so the, the the last one I watched, like I said, I missed with Lake Labriola. Uh, Fix versus Gomez, and Fix is usually one of my favorite guys. Uh, he just didn't bring uh, it. He I didn't forgot, bring I forgot, it. I forgot, I forgot. But he didn't bring it. He didn't bring it. He only won three two. And Gomez was significantly more aggressive. Well, he didn't. He didn't only win the three two, but he basically it was three to two with a couple seconds. To go, oh, I'm and sorry. Got to take down some air. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But right, it, okay. to your point, it was basically three two. Basically three two. And I, I've never seen Dayton Fix be that reserved. Um, I know he's strong defensively. I know he can scramble. But usually he puts a little more offense on the board and a little higher pace. Now, that being yep. said, he's coming off Junior Worlds, what, like two weeks ago or something? So Yeah, no, these guys these guys are on like they're on like a world tour, a lot of these guys. I mean they they're everywhere, man. I mean it's it's just so different than when I was a kid. Yeah, so different. And so for him, I'm I'm gonna cut him some slack. His performance was not outstanding, but um uh, he, like, he got his hand raised. Yep. He's 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 got plenty of good wins. Obviously, he's got a win over Spencer Lee. So I, I feel bad I didn't put him in the list of the top three. But in terms of performances, yeah, I guess I guess I'd give Fix number four. Yeah, no, I you know I, I would agree with you on that one for sure. Um, okay, so that was who's number one. That that's a fun event every year. Obviously, Willie did have trouble getting some of the better guys this year because the Junior and Cadet Worlds were so much later than, than they usually now, I got are. I got I got a question for you, um, Ben. Yeah. Is the reason Willie and Flo don't do every weight class is because if they can't get the best, they just don't do it at all? I think it just makes for too, I, you know, and I don't know, maybe I'm speaking on a turn here. I think it makes for too long of a night to have a pro match in 14 matches. Man, that's, you know, because it's not like this is. But uh, I, also, I also think that it really should be who's number one. So I, what I'm saying is if, if that's the reason that Flo does that, I like it. It's like. If I can't get the two best guys, then I'm not doing it. But you know, there, there were some like, weights here where there weren't the two best. Um, you know, I'm just talking about the way upper echelon. You know, if, if Bravo Young like and upper, Ramo were two and four, and yeah, that's Feller fine. Were that's clear, fine. Two I'm saying yeah, two guys in the top five, you you could probably have a WNL match, and it's not losing the integrity of the event. But outside of that, you know, you might as well just not have the match. Sure. And I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that's why we didn't see many upperweights because the upperweights are usually playing football. Correct. I know that the upperweights are playing football, um, but I do think there is a certain amount of they don't want they want to, and, they, and they're 100 percent right on this. They want to make an entertaining show. They want, to, you know, if you're Tommy, if you're in that gym, and well, I'll tell you, two years ago, um, well, when I was there because I was helping with FPL, the uh, which it's historic now, but that the Suriano fix match went 36 minutes, right? Because they did the unlimited overtime. And then there was another match, McFadden versus Isaiah White, maybe that went like 16 minutes or so, something insane, right? 
And right. the entire show ended up being like three hours and 15 minutes, and it was just too long. It was like, no, nah, we... It, you, just lose, you know what I'm saying? You lose the, um, you yeah, lose the crowd after a certain amount yeah. of time. It can only be a new episode. So I think, you know, if I'm putting on the show, I'm going for an hour and a half to two hours, which is eight to ten matches. And I think that's what you do. Right. I think you get your best eight to ten guys, you put them out there, and um, and you try to make the matches that, like you said, are um, they're relevant, they're, they're very highly ranked, but also the ones that are exciting that people want to see. Right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I guess we, we, you know, we're at, okay. So right now, Tommy, we're, we are at 50 minutes. Um, we, we had a few other things to talk about, but I don't know that we're going to be able to get that in depth with those things because yeah, I think, I think we should, I think we should close it out just because to, I think what you're about to say is I, I, I only want to talk about things that we can dive kind of deep on. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And you wanted to talk about, uh, you did. You want to talk about the fresh moves? We've we've blown this off for like two weeks, so we might just have to lead the show off on it well, next week. Well, I think as long as we do the freshman blues before these guys actually start competing, um, sure, it, it'll be an it'll be an appropriate time to talk about it. You and I both know it's a real thing, and we should talk about it and tell some stories about it, talk about the dynamics. Yeah, of, no, it's you important. Know, you know. 12 months ago, you were who's number one in Cadet World and this, that, and the other thing, and now you're on, in a, on a college team, and, you know, you got six different guys beating you every day. It's kind of a unique experience, you know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. And, and well, to that point, I, I think guys are coming in a slightly more prepared than, than, than you and I were 15 years ago. Um, so, so that yeah. does help, but the, there's no doubt that the freshman blues still exist. So let's just yep. hold that topic for next week. Let's pair that with recruiting. Um, you know, I looked at the recruiting. There's actually still a lot of top guys who are, who are yet to commit, which is I thought was interesting because I don't know that that's been the case in previous years that there were that many guys that were still uncommitted. I agree with that. I don't know why. It, to me, it's kind of like an anomaly because for so many years, guys have been recruiting or uh, committing early, and. Um, and now just randomly this year we got a lot of guys committing late. I think it's a better way to go. I mean, if my kids are ever in the good fortune of being recruited, I'm going to tell them to make the decision. Um, not to drag it on, but just begin the process late as well as decide late. But sometimes that's predicated on coaches making offers that don't stand for very long. You know, they get a lot of unnecessary pressure at a young age. And See, we're already getting ready to dive deep because I know sure. you're not going to talk well, okay. about this for well, we do have some time. No. Let me ask you one question, though. This, sure. this just happened. I'm going to ask you about this, and we'll, we'll wrap the show with this. Anthony Mantanona, Fargo champ, flow champ, he he um, he committed, verbally committed to Iowa State. Obviously, you can't sign paperwork at this point in time. He verbally commits to Iowa State, and then they withdrew their offer, and you know, allegedly, from what came out, is that they said if he took any other visits, they were withdrawing their offer, and it would never go back on the table. How do you feel about that? Um, well, I don't disagree with it because they they said it before anything happened. Yeah. You know, it's like, what is the point? If you really do verbally commit to a school and you say, I'm committed to you based on yeah. your offer, but I'm going to go hang out with another college, yeah. It's a joke. That is a joke. That is a complete joke. Welcome to adulthood when you commit to something and then you want to go hang out and have other college coaches wine you and dine you for a weekend and hang out with that that team's competition. Guess what? Welcome to adulthood. My offer is now off the table. The only thing that – the reason why I defend Iowa State is because they told him that prior to his visit. If that's the case – then I have no problem with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have mixed feelings on this because I feel the same way as, as you do about once you commit, you commit. Obviously, that's not that's not what's happening. So from um, Mantanona's perspective, right, if I'm Anthony Mantanona and I still have questions about do I really want to go to school here or there, I'm taking my visit because this is my life, right? That's fine. Just don't, that's fine. Just don't yeah. commit. And then from Iowa State's perspective, I, I get – but withdrawing your offer indefinitely, or, or you know, for pull, for uh, is that really the right move? Because what if he goes to Oklahoma and he I, says, I, I, here, "Here's the thing, though, Ben. Yeah. I don't think they swept the rug out from underneath the kid. 
I don't think they did. Yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. said this. If you commit it to us, if you make the choice to commit to us and verbally say, I am a cyclone, and then you go get wined and dined by Oklahoma or Ohio State or Penn State and let them tell you why you shouldn't come be with us when you've already publicly proclaimed it, our offer is off the table. There is nothing to me. It's, it's, you know what it is? It's welcome to adulthood, son, because you shouldn't be going and getting entertained. If, if, if you still are open, if you still want to consider other options, that's fine. Don't verbally commit. Yeah, no, I mean, I I agree with that statement, but I think there is definitely some interesting perspectives, uh, interesting perspectives to look at. So it's, it, it's actually like it's actually like saying we're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend, but I want to be able to go on some other dates. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's like this: like no, 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 we're going to get married. We're going to get married in like two months. I promise. We'll get married in two months, but I'm going to go on some dates before we get married. In two months, like it, it's a sure. joke. Okay, and what, what care, if? What care. if? Let me ask you this: What if I and I don't? I have no idea what happened, and I'm, I don't know who. I think I'm probably on Iowa State's side on this one. Um, but what if they? What if Iowa State said, "Hey, listen, man, money's on the table to you leave this weekend, and if you if you if you don't verbally commit to us by the time, because I know this has been done in other cases. I don't know if this one. If you don't take the, if you don't ex- verbally commit by the end of the weekend, the money's off the table. You know, did did one of those, and then the kids having buyer's remorse on it. Yeah, I think that's wrong. I think to say, I think to well, say, a lot of college this, coaches are doing that now. Yeah, no, I think that's wrong. I'm not saying that college coaches are always right. I'm just saying that based on what I know, which might be the truth, might not be the truth. But let's just assume this happened, Ben, that this yeah. kid committed to Iowa State, and Iowa State said, "We're so glad. We're going to get married in November legally. We're so happy." Go call Flow Wrestling and Intermat and everybody and tell them that you're a cyclone and we can rejoice. Um, hey, in the event that you like want to be entertained and wine to dine and solicited by other schools, just want you to know if you choose to do that, the offer's off the table. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, what do you what is what are you saying to the rest of the team if you're gonna let a kid verbally commit to you and you're gonna let him go hang out with the competition? Yeah, definitely. You know, and so to me, if it if it was done exactly that way and it was done as transparently as it is assumed to be, as the story goes on the internet, I'm on I'm in the Iowa State camp. I I really am because you just don't commit and then go on official visit. It's so it's so it's so juvenile that to verbally commit. If I verbally commit to Michigan, you really think that it, it's really like oh, but I'm going to take my official visit to Ohio State. I mean, what a joke. It's a joke to sure. me. Don't no. verbally don't verbally commit if you if you don't if you don't verbally commit if you want to go to other business. I agree. Let's let's just abolish the verbal commitment. It's really stupid. Period. Right. That's true. That that's also true. <laughs> All right, Tommy. I'm looking. Our time's up. Fun to throw that last topic right, at brother. you. Uh, you guys have a safe trip home, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, Ben. Talk to you soon. See you, bud. You are listening to the T-Row and Funky Show brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built.